Hello, true art believers, and welcome to my YouTube channel where I make videos of acrylic pour paintings, live stream drawing videos, and have interviews with inner artists internationally around the world. Before I start, and before the show starts, and I, before we have this interview, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, all the bells and whistles that you need to do for all the social media uh, platforms that you have to do nowadays. You have to hit that like button, you have to hit the the the, the 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 notifications bell what all who who I don't even know what they do they just I believe it's a notifications bell for YouTube but for the other places you don't have that notifications unless you set it on your phone to notify you if there's a, like a comment or anything um anyways I digress tonight I will be talking with fine artist Brian Hobein Brian lives and works in Astoria Oregon Brian's current body of work involves creating figurative watercolors that center around the ideas of Shex. 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 I totally messed it up. All right. I messed it up. There we go. Sexuality, comfort, and stillness. I look forward to talking to Brian and hearing more about his work. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hey Brian, how you doing? Hello. I'm what, great. Would, you, would you think of that that shex, sexuality thing? <laughs> that was it was wonderful. You did great. It was that was uh, very sexy. <laughs> that was uh, that's not out of the the normal for me. I think one time I was trying to say action. Hmm. I'm actually doing it again. Action Jackson, but I went action hmm. Jack ax, action Jackson action Jackson. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I said I know. that. And then for the whole night, I was teased, uh, like uh, amongst my peers, for saying it like that. And then I, you know, blushed a little bit. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. Brian, how are you yes. doing today? I'm wonderful, thank you. How are you? I, I'm doing good. Um, I I drank a half gallon of chocolate milk today. Oh man, I, I drank a half gallon. I. I do it when I, I've started lifting weights and I've been uh, uh, mm. just, I called it, it's called dirty bulking where you just, you just eat random mm. calories. And I was telling that to someone the other day, and like, I don't want to know what that means. <laughs> what, dirty like, bulking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It just means eating uh, uh, unhealthy calories to, mm. to, to uh, uh, get bigger and, and to uh, pro provide your body with energy. So that's what it was. So I've, I've, I'm uh, I'm uh, running on uh, a half gallon of milk today. How about you? What are you running on? Uh, no chocolate milk. I had uh, lots of water. Lots of water. Uh, do you, are you a? Uh, you just drink? Are you one of those uh, individuals that just drinks water all day, or do you have like a? Uh, you don't have any yep. fancy drink that you 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 choose? Nope. Water. Nope. Just water. Really? All day, every day. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh. Uh, I, I need to get on that that that. Boat, I mean, that, that chocolate ride. milk sounds incredible, <laughs> but uh, I drink water. Um, <laughs> um, is that just like you were when you were a kid? Did you were were you ever exposed to like sugary drinks or anything? Or you oh, just something? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was a latchkey kid, so I just whatever was there, I could just have. What is latch like a? It's called like is it latch? And key is that what it's for? Mm -hmm. Stands for, yeah. And that was a uh, um, uh, someone who was dropped off really early in at school. Is that right? I always or thought that... it was something. I don't know the origin of the term latch key, but I always thought it was something like it had to do with the child has the key to the house because they're going to be going there alone. Uh huh. Uh huh. I I I, I uh, remember when I was a kid, uh, we heard about uh, not. Like, well, we didn't heard about like, but like it was, uh, there was latchkey kids, and and we, I, I was, I was a kid, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. uh, all I m knew at the time was like, I would come to school, and they're already there, and they're like, play, get to play in the gym mm -hmm. for like, early on, like before class starts. Now I came to school at the same time as everyone else, so I don't know what that means. Uh, then I, maybe I was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's maybe I was misinterpreting, or maybe that yeah. was like a. Um, it's easy like to early, do when you're a kid. Yeah, early bird latch key. I don't know. Um, mm. So, Brian. Um, yes. 
Tell me about yourself. Uh, let's see. I am 41 years old. I live in Astoria, Oregon. I am a gay male. Um, I, I graduated from art school in 2019. Um, since then, I haven't really created any art. Uh, one, because of the burnout I suffered from art school. But then two, the pandemic hit and uh, my creativity just took a dive. Yeah. So I've been slowly, I've been doing other creative things uh, besides drawing and painting. Um, Cause you know, you have to, as a creative person, you have to create, you have to do something. And I was like, I, I can't draw, I can't paint. So I do, you know, maybe crafty things or make music or I got into film a little bit. And uh, yeah, and so I, I just bought a sketchbook. I've been slowly starting back into my drawing and uh, paintings. Yeah. So tell me about this 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 burnout. What do you what mm. do you mean by that? Like, um, I, I understand it. I, I completely understand it. Being yeah. this, like fatigued mentally and and, and like uh, spiritually, to, like when you're working on your yeah. own stuff, you just it feels like you can you can literally drain yourself uh, on multiple levels. So uh, yes. what was it for like for you? Well, how it <laughs> occurred was, and I've never had that before. Um, and how it occurred was, you know, basically my last year, especially my last semester at art school, every class I had, I was doing the same thing, you know, because as a senior, you get like more leeway. And it's like, you know, at this point, you should be making what you love. We should know what it is you want to make and you should be making it instead yeah. of just like, here's an assignment and go do that. So in every class, I was doing the same thing, figurative watercolors. So <laughs> every assignment was a figurative watercolor. And um, also at the end of my year, I, I was in uh, Memphis. I attended school in Memphis, Tennessee. And at the end, end of that year, um, I moved out here to Astoria, Oregon. Um, so between you know, finishing, finishing up school and all the things you have to do around that, but also <sighs> packaging up my apartment, sending it off and getting all that together too. It really just kind of frazzled me. And, uh, gosh, yeah, after, you know, you know, after it's, you do something big like that, like graduate art school uh, for me anyway, it was like this big cathartic thing. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, like I'm not even going to think about that for a while just art drawing. Um, and like I said, then the pandemic happened and really kind of, you know, took over and there's depression. There's, you know, a story, I guess I wasn't prepared how rainy it is here. <laughs> it's very gray and rainy. Mm -hmm. uh, that does, that doesn't help anybody with depression either. So, so yeah. And I've been, like I said, I've been slowly getting out of that um, by working on other creative projects. What, um, uh, what made you, or what was your decision to move to Oregon? Was there a job opportunity after, after you graduated? I fell in love. Okay. It's as simple as that. I fell in love. Yeah. With, with, a, 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 a another person, right? Another gay male. Yes. Another gay male. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, 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 or it could have been like, I fell in love with Oregon, you know, uh, you know, I visited here a few times and I, and I did, you know, of yeah. course it was in the summer when it was not so gray, gray and rainy, but, um, I was impressed at how many art galleries, uh, were here, uh, at the time. Um, yeah. And they had a, the college here has a, uh, yearly, um, what do they call it? It's a show centered around, uh, naked figurative new, you know, nudes. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, that's per that's perfect. I mean, that's not why I moved here, but I was like, "This what a cool little town." So, uh, oh, and the Goonies, the Goonies are here. This is where they filmed the Goonies. They did. Yes. Do they have like a uh, 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 was it what do you call it? like a uh, like a little place that, uh, gosh, like a a fan store or where or a place that you can go that that has the 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 Goonies memorabilia? Oh, sure. They have, uh, well, the Oregon Film Museum is in okay. this town. And the Oregon Film Museum is actually the jail 
that you see in the beginning of the Goonies. Okay. The old jail. So, so you, you, you moved uh, to Oregon, uh, Astoria, yeah. Oregon mm -hmm. for love. <laughs> for um, love. And and um and uh and then the pandemic happened. Yeah. And you were burnt out. So you, cause you're every project you were doing at at, at your college was, mm -hmm. was figurative. Was it was it by mm -hmm. was that the actual like was it your own concept work or was it like the prescribed uh, assignments from the professors? Um, it was kind of my own concept work. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it was as if every class became like a independent study, even though they weren't. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was like every class became that the teacher, you know, the school was shutting down. The school is no longer in operation. Yeah. That was the last class of it. So it, and it's that. yours. We talked about it. that's the same school you yeah. went to. Yeah. Um, and so the teachers, as you can imagine, were a bit more relaxed and <laughs> we're just like, do it out, you know? Were they like whatever f it? <laughs> no, they weren't. No, they weren't. Did someone they come weren't. in with like liquor in their hand? No, and, like, no. I brought everyone a six pack. They weren't. <laughs> they weren't that relaxed. Okay, but they were. <laughs> they were just like you know, and I'm a pretty cool, easygoing guy. So it, it was just like the teachers were like, if this is what you want and what you're going to do, then you should do it in class. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. And and uh, so. Uh, Kind of t talk about this because you've you uh you you when we were uh doing our tech check you were talking mm. about how you off and on you were going into college back off and on off and yeah. on and then and it just so happened that you you uh j dived back in and then like the the the, the, the that's college decided that mm. they 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 were no longer liquid they couldn't yeah. afford to keep running right mm. and you you know did you start out at MCA or or did you go to other universities? I did, yeah. I started uh, at MCA in 1997. Um, I was 17. I went 97. I went 98. I skipped a year and I went 2000. And I just failed miserably. I just failed out in 2000. And yeah, so what? 15 years later, uh, I went back. What? What? How'd you fail out? Oh, it was awful. So I was. How old was I? Twenty-one or something? And I, I uh, had so many problems, so many issues, undiagnosed mental illness, <clears throat> de you know, depression. Yeah, um, a lot of issues I'd never dealt with, really. Uh, and so, I just I, I went back to school because I, I knew I wanted to. I knew I wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to complete school. It was something I wanted to do, but I just I couldn't. Uh, I was drinking heavily. There were, uh, you know, a lot of issues going on. I just, I, I couldn't do it. So, you know, and then what, 2008, seven, seven or eight, maybe even nine, I got into therapy, still in therapy, uh, and just found it immensely helpful. Turn, I mean, I have to say, turn my life around. And uh, yeah, went back to school. It was the best. It was the best thing I did. I think it was. It was really good that I did that. The uh, to to uh, <laughs> all of it therapy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was. I, yeah. I was. Want to know what you were referring to? Um, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for you. That's awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Um, and you, uh, you, were you when you went back to that for those who don't know mca stands for memphis college of art memphis college of art yes okay um so when you went back how many years did you have left officially to to fulfill your uh well bfa right it was bachelor's of, it was difficult for me because i had i had failed a bunch of classes uh -huh. so it was almost as if um gosh i don't know a couple years didn't really happen <clears throat> Because I had, you know, I had to redo yeah. those classes that I failed, yeah. um, and it created so many problems for me too when I when I did finally go back. But um, I ended up going for four more years, um, and I but I went because I could. I went at a leisurely pace. Mm -hmm. I did like two or three classes a semester, um, enough that would not overwhelm me. Because I knew it for me, I knew it was like okay, this this feels big, this feels overwhelming. So I'm gonna I'm gonna 
start it in little bite-sized chunks. Yeah. And I just kind of stayed there. I, I didn't go. My plan was to go take on more and more as I got into it, but I, I stayed there. So. Well, from my experience from, from Memphis College of Art is this. Yeah. I don't know if it, how it changed, if it was any different, but uh, uh, when, from my experience, there was a high amount of volume creation in some, in, mm. in, in some form or another. I don't know if that was still rel or like occurring when you were there. Yeah. Um, but I re experience it as like constantly working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of assignments and a lot of, and, and not knowing it, 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 it's so much work that I didn't even think I was making a lot of work because most of it was in, in like pad format, you know, okay. I wasn't yeah. making a lot of like things outside of that, like a few mm. things here and there, but like there was a lot of like almost like retrospective journaling, like with like lots okay. of drawing in there. Yeah, or like it may have been the professors at the time. I don't know. It may have been the professors at the time. I know I had one class. You know, I had to do a couple classes um, that were for like more for like freshman students, but they mm. were like they didn't exist when I first went, and so coming, you know starting over, I have to, I have to take them. And some of those were like that. I was mm -hmm. like, wow, they're really kind of putting a lot on these new students. Just a ton of work, ton of work. And what did you learn when you were there? What you, uh, uh, what new skills did you gra uh, grasp or acquire? Well, I'll tell you that, you know, watercolor I had never really done before. Um, I was big into illustration and, um, I mean, I still am. But when I went back in 2015, my focus was on digital art. I was like, okay, this is what's happening. This is what's now. I got to learn all this Photoshop, Illustrator, just all this stuff. And so I did that, you know, and I, and I, my BFA is in, you know, design arts with a focus on illustration. But it was probably my second year, 2016, um, I took a summer uh, watercolor class and loved it and it was it was a big shift for me um we're talking about what i learned this is, is something like my art seemed to never really hit with anybody i i felt anyway like i would show it to people or i do i do the work and there's real really no reaction to it um when I started doing the watercolor, the, you know, the male nude figurative watercolors, um, I was really thinking more conceptually than I ever had. Um, we, we talked about comfort and stillness and this kind of thing. And I, that's what I was really, at the time, um, I was going through a really uh, hard physical issue with my own body. I did not feel comfortable. I did not feel still in my body. Um, and so I was kind of conceptually exploring that with the with the work, and and I felt like watercolor was um, the perfect medium for that. It's so gentle and kind of I don't know delicate. Yeah. Um, and anyway, so in in doing that work, I just almost immediately noticed a huge response from it um, from the from work. you or from from uh, from others. Parties to the okay. work, a response to the work. And I thought about that and I thought, well, what is that? What people don't really care about the comic superheroes I'm drawing or whatever, but they're really into this. And I, my only conclusion was that it was coming from a, just a really personal place inside yeah. of me. And it was kind of coming out on the, the paper and people were connecting with that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, there's also the, um the element the homosexual element and for me i grew up in a, a very small town very homophobic i was i didn't come out until my 30s um officially i guess um so there was that part too here i am now creating artwork of <laughs> nude men yeah you know and so for me that was also like a real you know talking about what i learned it was like this is this is okay. This is this is who I am. This is a part of who I am, and it's okay. So, 
So um, they that those that work that you were working on uh, hmm. really struck a chord with uh, the audience, the people that you they yeah. you know they were. Um, I, I guess maybe uh, the. The, the superhero, the, the 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 anime, manga, manga. I get yeah. corrected about that all the time. Yeah. Like uh, th that genre is so full and saturated, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you got to be like the in order for like res a, to get a good proper response, you probably got to be in the the top ten percent of of, of yeah. skill range, you know. Yeah. Like, or you just been doing it for so long that you're known for it for like. You a, may be right. Yeah. You know, and so like that. That's probably why it didn't it didn't get the, the same response but i can totally see the the um, emotional um uh, response from your work from the 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 samples that you sent yeah. me i can totally mm -hmm. see that yeah and um where so I, I are they those feel like they are they're self portraits or some of them are are they there's a couple yeah there's, yeah there's a couple of self portraits and um so are you uh, getting models to do this work? Or are you finding, are you uh, like finding photos? For, where are you getting your, your source material from when you're working on these pieces? It was a mix. It, it was, was a, mix a mix of both. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not really doing them now, but I, I assume when I, you know, start back up, it'll again be a mix. Um, I do like having models. Uh, Cause then, you know, you can kind of, <clears throat> place them how you know if how yeah. it's like oh that's a that'd be a great pose um so so that was great but then again there's something about just like finding sort of the perfect photo online and just being like wow this captures you know everything i i want and you know and um what's what's the uh, uh the concept behind uh making your figures in this like bluish tint is there any reason why you did some of those blue pieces tint. that way like they like the 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 oh. all done uh all there? in blue am i there oh no are we having internet connections problems again so we're gonna try and reconnect right quick to see what happens here um but i was mainly going to be asking brian just a quick little oh there we go brian are you there <laughs> yes you're there we're back okay okay uh that you asked about a bluish tint yeah i wanted to know um was that uh, what was the reasoning behind the 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 blue chroma figure paintings oh okay okay now okay at first i was like what does he mean but i i, I know now that was um that was an attempt to kind of stretch stretch my watercolor skills i mean with watercolor you can do that kind of stuff and get away with it kind of mm -hmm. um that's what i find mm -hmm. anyway as long as you have the form it doesn't really matter what the color is do you know what i mean um you don't look at it and go oh blue person <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just like, oh, interesting. <laughs> Looks like a blueberry. <laughs> yeah. So that was um, there's a there's a Spanish uh, painter, a watercolorist, Conrad Rosette, uh -huh. and he pretty much does the same thing, except he works pretty much uh, all with women. Um, and so I was kind of going off. I was really inspired by him. Um, and so, yeah, so I was just kind of stretching my, I was so used to mixing skin color and trying to get the right, you know, browns. And um, so I wanted, I wanted to, to test the waters of some, do, do it a little differently, I guess. What are you thinking about when you're, when you're doing those works? Like, what, are you, are you, uh, are you getting into a, a certain uh, place in your mind? Or are you, are you thinking about um, more on a technical aspect where you're, you're just like trying to develop the form or, or is a mixture of both, you know, mm. what, where, what mindset are you in when you're on the, on those, uh, uh watercolor pieces? Well, uh, that's a great question. I'm, I'm one of the, the people who believes like, you know, not to get too woo woo, but like that, the, the <sighs> creativity is sort of coming through, mm -hmm. coming through me. I don't know where from or what, what that means, but so the mindset I get in on those especially is, is one of like, can I turn my mind off enough? Can I quiet my mind down enough to let this happen? 
And so I'm always I'm always listening to music. Usually with the with those watercolors, it's got to be kind of ambient. Uh, you know, maybe vocals, maybe not. And I've got to get into a place of um, just letting it happen. If if I don't get into that place, <clears throat> my mind just says, "Ooh, are you sure about that line? Oh, you know, erase that. Yuck. Oh, that yeah. doesn't look good. What will so-and-so think if they see that? Like, I can't do that. <laughs> so I can't create art that way. So um, I just I just have to get into a, a zone, as people like to say, like a, where, I, where I can just kind of be calm. Sort of like the, 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 the subject matter I deal with, the stillness, the calmness, feeling comfortable. I kind of have to get into that state. It, it does. It does sh- kind of exude that, right? Where the, the um, hmm. it's addressing the the uh, uh, the the like just the being comfortable in your own skin, right? I, I think, and the, the way that you've you are positioning the figures, you know, uh, yeah. where where uh, I, I can't explain it. Like it's it's. I when you when you start when you talk about it or when when you uh, sent me the the your explanation to your work, I was yeah. like, oh I get it I can see that, okay. but like I can't define it you know, mm. in in, in mm. my own words, yeah. um, I I also I when I was looking on my I got a kick out how you um you played around with the the skewing of proportions you know the exaggerations of forms yeah. a little bit i got a kick out of that i was like i was like it's like i don't normally see that type of exaggeration with with the figure and i was like I, that's kind of refreshing and mm-hmm. and the 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 lack the lack of really hard contour lines was really mm-hmm. nice like you were very very sensitive to those just applying just enough of, of watercolor right to yeah. express those forms, but, with, but you're not like putting uh, comic style hard edges on everything, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 And you know, and I like those kind of, of drawings and watercolor paintings, but you're, you're absolutely right for, for that subject matter, for that series. That is absolutely what's called for a light touch. Yeah. And how, uh, how uh, long does it typically take for you to make uh, one of those pieces? Oh gosh. Um, over, over a series of days, over a series of probably three to four days, you know, I don't, I'm not good at keeping track of how long I'm there. I like you get into that zone, you, Mm -hmm. I, some time just goes away, you know, so I'm, I'm not good at like keeping track, but gosh, probably, you know, two hours a day, two hours a day. Like, so like, uh, up upwards of, of, 10 hours on some of them? Yeah, six to 10. Do you have a favorite uh, brand of paper that you like to use your water for, uh, use watercolors? Yes, it's probably the one everyone uses arches, uh, cold press, and hot press. But I like the cold press better. I, what is it, 300 pound, I think? 160. Mm-hmm. But um, Stonehenge um, just started, well, a year ago, had just started making a, a watercolor paper. Um, which was pretty good. It was okay. What's the most expensive paper you ever used? Oh, probably like, um, yeah, like a 300 pound. I mean, that stuff gets almost like cardstock, uh-huh. you know, it's like, it's heavier than cardstock. Um, I can't, I can't remember the pro the prices maybe in the teens, the teens. Yeah. $13, oh. $14. I remember, I remember when I went to him. I'm I'm like slurring my words. I always do this. I remember. That's I need it. I I remember. Uh, I remember when I when I went to uh, California. I was looking at these pieces. And they're on like the 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 gallery director uh, was very uh, wanted to express the point about how expensive the paper was. Uh, <laughs> like uh, it's like this artist uses paper that's like. It was something ridiculous. It was like, hmm. let's just say, uh, like two hundred dollars per square foot. Oh boy! And I was like, uh, wow, uh, yeah, that that's not fun. No. <laughs> uh, 
the, the artist was selling the work for high value of like a high okay. high level like but like i was like uh yeah. this paper better be like the <laughs> best paper ever known right. to to human kind right like the the world yeah. it's like the moment i do something on it it's going to turn to gold right um right so uh in the teens do you, do you feel that that ever like um when you buy expensive piece of paper uh, mm -hmm. and you make and you do your watercolors do you feel that that locks you up at all oh absolutely yes for sure yeah you're looking at this blank sheet of expensive yeah. paper i'm like it's got to be good <laughs> whatever yeah, goes yeah. on it's got to be and that, just right away that kind of pressure I I'm, I can't work under that, you know. I can't do that. Yeah, I I, um, I totally understand that feeling. Yeah, uh, I, I try to separate myself. Like I don't even when when I'm making work now, and I uh, I'm, I'm like uh, I'm a uh, I'm I don't even look at the the price of the materials anymore because I don't want to yeah. the, have that the subconscious thing hindering me. Like, oh, this is really expensive paint. I better not f it up, right? So right. Uh, so I right. uh, just like, it's just like, uh, well, crumble that receipt, throw that away. Yeah. Um, so that might, uh, so you, 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 um, you work on not expensive paper because it deters you. Yeah. Uh, Arches isn't, um, cheap. Arches is not Arches. They're like $3, is, $4 a sheet. I think more than that by now, I think maybe, maybe six or seven. Oh boy! The sheet. I mean, that just uh, stuff just keeps going up and up. I, I don't even know. I don't. I haven't bought ex, like a, a expensive piece of paper in a while, so I don't. Know. Yeah, I'll say this though: the watercolors I use, and I've tried a few now, are just the cheap. The cheap. I think they're the cheapest. The Academy Grumbacher Academy. Yeah. Watercolor, and I remember in school, a te the watercolor teacher asked me. She was like, "What do you? What paints? You know, after you've been." uh painting for a while what paints do you like and i was like just the cheap ones and she's like yeah, yeah me too i mean i think that's the big secret is like you don't need the expensive stuff the, the thing i think about that so i have been thinking about that funny enough what, what we're talking about here is like you do need the right tool for the right job yeah so but that tool is not going to do the job for you yeah right so it's like i need I need some good. I need some good paper. I'll spend six or seven dollars on on the paper, but the the tool that works for me is the cheap watercolor. So that's the right tool for me for the job. So I make music too, and for the longest time, I had the old um, version of the the music program, and I my, my music had gotten stale, and I just I didn't even like making it anymore. Well, this year I bought the new version and I've been making music like crazy and just, it's been real easy. And I was like, okay, well I needed this. Sometimes I feel like you'll run into like old school artists and musicians who, and when I say old school, I mean just a little bit older than me, who will say things like, um, no, you have to make your own pencil. Like you have like, those kinds of things, like it doesn't matter what you use. You have to like make your own pencil or you have to use whatever. When it's like, you know, I could use Crayola watercolor and if it looks good, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, there's 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 a, a like a group of people, not group of people, like, but uh, the, the, the- There's just a certain also, mindset. Like, yeah, like, a, like you, you have to stretch your own canvases. You have to prepare your own surfaces. What you, you know, yeah. you have to do you, uh, a lot of the the traditional uh, things that normally were relegated to the artist because they yeah. have to make everything. Uh, but you don't have to anymore. You know, no. like the the consumer doesn't necessarily care about that. Some do, not at all. but not all of them. No, know? it's a to me, it's an antiquated way of thinking about create creating. That's a, that's a, such such a um, extra thing you don't even need to put on yourself. Really, Let's forget all forget about all that. What's a typical day look like for you? Oh my god, that involves um, art, music, etc. Yeah, um, I am a bit of an introvert. Um, and I live here, I live with my boyfriend who is the complete opposite. He's an extrovert. 
he's likes to be loud and gregarious. I like to be quiet. I like to have some music, set a mood. So what it's been like uh, in the last few days is I get up, I do some stretching kind of yoga stuff. Uh, I sit down at the drafting table. I make myself do some sketching. Um, and then recently I just released an EP of music. So then I would hop on the computer and, and mix and, and finalize my, uh, my music. And then in the evenings, I'm usually just spending time with my, my boyfriend. How long do you spend making music a week or a day? You know, um, gosh, I can really get lost in that. I think even more so than, than drawing and painting. Um, when I'm making music a lot, I mean, I have to tear myself away. I can go all day. I, I went all day the other day. It's like my boyfriend was like, oh, there you are. You know, it was, it was just kind of all day. <laughs> what? <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what do you, are you, uh, um, how do you make your music? Like what instruments are you using? Is it all predominantly on the computer or is it like you, you have instruments and that you jack into the computer and you're recording? How, what, what's going on with that? It's mostly produced on the computer. I have a uh, MIDI MIDI out keyboard with little pads and knobs and dials mm -hmm. and things, but it's all produced on the digital uh, audio workstation, also known as a DAW. Uh, yeah, which has like synthesizers and samplers, drum machines. So what do you do? What kind of music do you make? Well, I've been making music since I uh, was 17 and it's always been right there with with art, with drawing and painting, uh -huh. um, uh, as, as far as like a passion goes, it's always been right there with it. But, um, the EP I just released was all focused on basically nostalgia. It was all uh -huh. like, which has helped me through this freaking pandemic nostalgia, like diving into stuff from my past, um, comics and music, and movies from like 80s and 90s has really grounded me. <laughs> but um, the EP was um, sort of a love letter to like mid 90s to early 2000s electronic music, um, all different genres. So there's ambient, there's hip hop, there's jungle, drum and bass, techno. Do you want to share one? Would you like to share it? Or would yeah, you? Yeah, can you want... I? Sure. How do I do um, that? So what you do is you can go. To if you're what are you on? Are you on Google Chrome or are you on Mozilla Firefox? Google Chrome. If you're on Google Chrome, great. I'm not on it right now, but like, uh, so you would have to go if you're on Google Chrome. You, yep. You would go to share the share thing. I see it. Bottom, share yep. screen, um, and it'll, you ask the it will ask you to share the screen and um, let's see. Uh, I would like I forgot. Um, <laughs> it's it, it's um it, it allows you to share a file in oh, there. Okay. Uh, let me go. I'm not in Google Chrome right now. I'm gonna. I'm going right now. I'm gonna go. To, uh, okay. Stream. Well, it's okay. Yeah. Don't. I've, I've got to find the files here. Okay. But um, it should be pretty interesting. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a little quick test here. Okay. Uh, I know that you can do this. I just don't know how. And I don't want you to like turn on your speakers and have it <laughs> blare through that, you know? Okay. Yes. Uh, so you'd go to share. You can do a video file or uh, in there you go to share screen. You can set it up so it shares audio of something somehow. So like if you have the file, the file, the vi like the audio on like on the web, mm -hmm. you could in theory, um, share it that way. Okay. Well, I do uh, have it on, um, I released it on Bandcamp, so I could yes. go there and play you it from go there. there. And, um, you would go on the share screen. It will, it will, um, in Chrome, it will, uh, it will give you an option on your, there, there's three things. So there's share your screen, share the application window, and then there's Chrome tab. You go to Chrome tab and it should say share audio on the bottom. And what that will do is will allow you to share the audio of that window, but not necessarily have to open up 
the video or the the actual uh the actual um uh browser right okay i th i think i get you chrome tab okay yeah i, I uh if i was on uh google chrome at the moment oh so, see it's right there are um, you seeing it now yeah i see on the bottom of the stream there and as long as you have the 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 share audio feature it should in theory once you click it it should play it you know okay well, let's um, let's see. This is one. Um, this is a slower one. This is um, hip hop inspired by um, early Timbaland. Do you know Timbaland? Timbaland, yeah. Mm -hmm, Timbaland. I oh, know. Is it? Playing? Are you hearing it? No, I'm not. Maybe we can add it to the stream and see if that works. Can I? I'm gonna add it. There we go. You're hearing it. Are you hearing yes. it now? I am hearing it. Are you? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I am. I am I'm hearing it. it. So, um, well, here, so I'll this turn is, it down a little. So this is like your little uh, uh, stuff that you do on the side, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like a lot of artists are like that, don't you? That they have, maybe they paint and draw, but then they have this other thing they need to do. Yeah, I, I was actually always very envious of like my peers who were uh who like could do music uh and i'm like man everyone all the other artists i know can like play the drums or or a guitar or or is like in a band or doing all that kind of stuff aside i'm like i can't do that i just i just don't know how uh, yeah. all right I, and i was never uh, uh into it as a kid and just never translated it was just like art to me so this is your recent EP. Yeah. Um, released two days ago, I think. And how many songs does it have? Like, uh, how many uh, tracks? Uh, just five, but just it five. is a precursor to an album. So I'm going to keep working on music. Uh, you know, who knows how many tracks I'll have? 12 or 13? How, do you know how... So what is this this thing that you, you're talking about? Like, what's that called? Band? That website? Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Yep. And is that like, what is Bandcamp? <laughs> Bandcamp is a musical uh, digital platform to release music on. Uh -huh. um, I think typically it's indie artists, people okay. without contracts or, you know, big backing. And I think also there's a higher share of profits if someone buys your album. And do you do you actually sell your work? Do you sell your albums at all? Um. Well, you know, this is only the second one I've put up there, and okay. I have sold a copy. Um. But it's not like hotcakes or anything. Not selling them like hotcakes. <laughs> I no. hear uh, um, one one trick of getting your your work out there is through TikTok. Interesting. Uh, and um, that's where a lot of uh, musical artists are, are making it nowadays wow or, i don't even have that i don't have that app yeah or or through twitch where they they uh um, are okay. getting uh, uh like gamers to to basically uh, uh play their music in the background mm -hmm. um oh okay while, like a popular streamer yeah, yeah and um the reason why is because a lot of music obviously you can't just Air it, you gotta. It's, it's copyrighted, right? It doesn't get yeah. taken down. So th that's way. That's the way that uh, artists are now kind of circumventing that and getting their work out there. And TikTok, um, if you make a, a, a hot track and uh, someone like Charlie D'Amelio, De, De De whatever her name, I don't, her last name is <laughs> D'Amelio, Char Charlie D, they call her. Oh, okay, <laughs> Charlie D. Yeah, <laughs> If, if you get her to dance to one of your beats, uh, mm. that, that's game over, man. You're all, you're all, you're all, you'll get lots of uh, uh, attention mm. that way. But yeah. um, I hear that. In a way, that's almost really sad to me to hear that. Like, the music doesn't stand on its own. It's not its own, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it can, the music can be a backdrop for 
a celebrity, but it can't yeah. really just kind of be its own thing that people enjoy. I think, honestly, I think people have um, really come to take music for granted. It's in everything. Yeah. It's, you know, and you need it in everything. You need it in video games, movies, TV, um, celebrity dancing. Yeah. But, um, but people are like, well, but we're not going to pay for it and we're not going to kind of I don't respect it. I don't know. Yeah. And then there's a lot, and there's just a lot of hungry artists, musicians, musical artists out there. They're, you know, clawed yeah. to, to get their name out there and get their work sold and, you know, the, to make a living doing it, you know? Yeah. And, what's weird is I, you know, I buy a lot of music. Um, well, not a lot, but if I like something, I buy it. And I feel like I'm in a, the minority now. Like people are yeah. just don't buy music. They're just, they're streaming it, which musicians make just, pennies from yeah. that but and it's isn't it like now the, the mu like musical artists they they have to they have to tour now like well to make their their the majority of their money is where mm -hmm. it's, where they're getting their money from or yeah. or up in the musical videos which are also you know there's an overabundance of now but like oh, yeah. in those musical musical videos uh the they get like you know ad placement you know or uh -huh. Um, so like, uh, was it like, uh, was it Dr. Dre's beats? What is it like his headset beats? Oh yeah. His you know, like I, yeah. I think for a while they, they would, uh, um, they would pop up in all these music videos and like, that's how he was <laughs> uh, yeah. cro uh, cross platforming. And also, um, you know, that's how artists were also getting paid by like, Hey, or, or like, uh, I don't know what are the, what are some, come up, some kind of sponsorship deal or something. Yeah, or, or like, uh, uh, I'll wear your clothes on my music video if you pay me. Mm -hmm. If you either you give yeah. me free clothes or you pay me, uh, um, you know, a royalty fee or something, or some sort of money, some sort of sum of money. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I could see how um, it, it, the 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 like the the music becomes like a second note to the the uh, other platforms. Yeah. Right. But I, um, on the other side of the this, the the uh, the aisle, right? Like you could, you could. Uh, it it also helps the artists, right? With with the with the ability to to use these these social platforms to kind of propel their work in, in mediums yeah. that they or in markets that they normally wouldn't be uh, available to. So that mm -hmm. you know, there's some nice things that are occurring through that. Oh no, absolutely, yeah, that's true. Like I, uh, I've had some students, and I, I know a student that really wants to make it in in the music business, or or at least uh, make a living off it. And yeah. um, and I hear that uh, what he's doing right now is he's, he's 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 working through some Twitch streamers, and he's doing that thing. So uh, more power to him, you know. I'm really yeah. uh, hoping yeah, hoping that it, it it yields something. But that was pretty cool. I didn't I didn't know that. Um, I I'm not I'm not a uh, really knowledgeable in the the ambient techno uh uh music uh mm -hmm. i think the i do listen to it uh mm. occasionally but i i actually listen to i think it's the prime thanatos on you youtube and uh mm. what he makes is uh is like 80s genre like techno beats so it's like, like uh, synth wave stuff. Yeah, yeah, eighty yeah. synth wave movies. So like stuff you would hear in eighties movies. Yeah, right. Uh, I love that. Done now and yeah. just almost in loop, and you know, or chill wave stuff. I don't know. What they, I don't know why they call it chill wave. Why did it do? Why do they call things that. wave? You know, is it? Oh, you know, I don't know. I'm sure there's a there's a nice reason for that. Uh, maybe because it comes in a wave, like it comes in a as like things become popular all at once it's yeah. like a wave of i mean who know i'm just making that up i don't know <laughs> <laughs> a wave of music how would you categorize your your uh, music what would it, like what would you call it i like, find what it genre would be well i find it best and easiest to just call it electronic electronic because i'm not yeah i'm not really deep into one genre like where it all has to be some kind of techno or just chill wave. I could make a chill wave track, but I I wouldn't want to be called just like chill wave uh, genre. 
Um, I'll just make all kind. I like making all kinds of electronic music. When you when you make your music, are you able to do it like um, almost in real time? Is there a way to do that? Um, I'm coming in as like an like an amateur, like who doesn't know anything yeah. about how the programs react or run or operate. Oh, absolutely! You can you can do it in real time if you mean like just like recording and then like go looping and then recording over that and th this kind of thing. I'm a little more meticulous. I, I'm a little, I would say I'm more of a producer than I am mm -hmm. a musician. Mm -hmm. um, if you gave me a guitar, I could do some chords, but I couldn't serenade you or anything. But uh, give me a you know a computer and a keyboard and you know a, a couple hours, I can craft, compose something. A couple cans of Monster Energy drink or Surge? Uh, no, just water. Just water. <laughs> <laughs> do you have water with lime or lemon at all? My boyfriend does. No, but I just I just do water. He always does uh, some lemon in his. I, I like doing it with uh, like a giant wedge of, of lemon, and I'll, I'll I'll like with this cup or this mm. bottle, I'll I'll take a giant like a half thing of lemon, and I'll just put the uh, it on the side here, and I'll just yeah. smash it and just like let all the lemon kind of uh, drop down, so it's not only uh, uh, like spritzing it, but also mm -hmm. well, it's 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 more like a lemonade to me, right? I don't know. So I don't I, eat a lot of sweets. Yeah, I don't eat any. I saw on something. I've wanted to try this. Someone was talking about putting um, cucumber, sliced cucumber, in your water. Yeah, how kind of refreshing that is. That to me, that sounds kind of kind of nice. A fresca. Does fresca do that? I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. uh, I always use that uh, that that uh, that drink for a joke because it's just it's just I like a uh, funny soda. And to mm. me, it's just like a funny soda. It's actually really good. I like it. Oh, okay. I don't, if I ever had, if I ever go get soda, well, I wouldn't get Fresca. That's for sure. I have some pipes. All right, sorry. All right, uh, Brian. I'm. I'm yeah. That I want to say thank you for sharing your music. Um, oh, I yeah. uh, I didn't know that. Uh, and uh, if you we we could if you like maybe near the end we could uh, play another song before we uh yeah end the interview you know that'd be kind yeah, of great absolutely and um i can also put a, a on the link uh in the this uh, like description update it so it has a link to your uh music ep okay yeah the bandcamp page perfect yeah that'd be great yeah. um brian do you think uh are you would you consider yourself like a, a disorganized or organized person Hmm, that's a good question. I'm looking around my room and I would have to say disorganized. Disorganized? I, I would, but at the same time, I do things like um, lots of lists and lots of, especially for, so say for the for the album, the EP, mm -hmm. lots of like, okay, that the track we heard, what does this track need to have? It needs to have drums. What, what is, you know, so I would like organize <clears throat> So creatively, I'm a little more organized than just like physically, I guess. Um, how do you start your work? A <sighs> um, couple of ways. Sometimes I like to just start the blank piece of paper and a pencil or lead holder and just go and let that develop into something. Same with music. Sometimes I have nothing in mind. I'm just going to pounce on some keys and see what comes out of it. And, you know, a lot of times nothing comes out of it. And sometimes some really nice finished work comes out of it. Um, but otherwise, um, I do really well when I um, think about in terms of a series of work. Like, okay, I know I want to have 12 things. I like collections. So it's like, okay, I know I want to have this collection of work. What does this need to be about? And, you know, when you get a few ideas down on paper, I have my notepad right here, list. Um, um, when you get a few things down on paper, then you can kind of, you know, that can inspire you further. Um, as far as just like starting work, that can inspire mm -hmm. you into like, well, what is this going to be? Throw some ideas down on, on, on the paper. Yeah, the the um, 
I, I think the, the jotting down of ideas is an undervalued application. Absolutely. Um, like, uh, sometimes I, so, so I teach, sometimes I'll have my students like write, you know, mm -hmm. it could be about the, the, the actual, like, uh, pro the, uh, the, the, the project. It could just be like, if I say, if you don't have anything to say about the project or any thoughts on the project, just, just write about something. It could be about what mm -hmm. you had for breakfast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, anything so that, uh, maybe something comes from it, you know, the, the, yeah. the kind of think of the process. But um, writing is undervalued, um, and I think uh, I don't. You don't get a. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to to explain this, but uh, I haven't heard from all the artists I, I've spoken to. And I, there's I've only had a, like a handful where they they sit down and kind of write out the process. A lot of them either mm -hmm. like there's. A lot of more like just let's go work on it, yeah. and then there are a lot of more like very meticulous, uh, and then or a lot of more um, they'll they'll jot up a few sketch ideas and like that's that's the one I want. Let's make it up larger, you know. Or some oh, right. deal, you know, some of them will deal with uh, okay. I have an idea. I need to get some source material and compose it on Photoshop, you know. Uh, yeah. But writing is not always uh, one of the go tos I hear. Uh, with work, but I, I find that um, at least capturing the idea uh, through pe pen and paper, or pencil and paper, or notebook, or sketchbook, or have it where have it like somewhere yeah. for future reference would be uh, is always good because then um, you're offloading the idea, right? And oftentimes mm -hmm. the idea um, escapes you like that, right? And then you ne you'll never remember it ever sure. again. Yeah, you know, and sometimes and the idea you come up with, I've, or at least I find for myself, I'm not ready for it yet. Like I'm not like, ooh, I want to draw whatever, but not right now. <laughs> you know, like I'll, I'll put that down, and it's like that is definitely a concept I want to approach, but I'm not ready right now. I right now I just I want to take a nap or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, did you t did you take a nap today? I did take a nap today. Yes. Was it was it a glory? How long was it? How long was it? Um, Forty five minutes, maybe do an you, hour. Do you, when you take a nap, do you actually? Uh, uh, is it on your bed or is it like on a like a couch or something, or like a like a recliner? On my bed. Yeah, those are nice naps. <laughs> yeah, those are. those are the those are the miracles of the day. Yeah, those are incredible. <laughs> I love are. naps. I love naps. Oh. I love baths. <laughs> yeah. Anything that just kind of brings me down. I have a lot of anxiety. So, you know, anything that kind of kind of bring me down to just kind of soothe like a nap or a bath or, you know. Do you use Epsom salt in your baths at all? Absolutely. <laughs> do you, um, is it a, do you use like a, a lot or like just like a one or a more than the prescribed amount that they say? Just the amount they say, which is two cups. Yeah, that's those having those minerals are uh, supposedly very good for you. I think it helps. I think I've noticed um, a difference. Kind yeah. of was it? Use your muscles. I believe it doesn't it have like magnesium in it or something like the 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 salt itself. Mm -hmm. Like like there's some minerals in there that your skin absorbs that is supposed to be really helpful for you. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure on the what's all in there. I just know that it it feels good, and I know my boyfriend. He wasn't a big bath taker before I moved in. He's now taking lots of baths with <laughs> Epsom salts, and your Epsom Epsom salt budget has skyrocketed. It's skyrocketed through the roof. <laughs> At one point, just the other day, what we had um one, two, three, four, five, six bags, six like, <laughs> four pound, eight pound bags in there. <laughs> And now you don't. They're they're gone. Now they're down. <laughs> we we are. I don't know how long ago that was, but we're down to like three or four bags. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um. So, what other things do you do to uh, uh, taper your anxiety? <sighs> well, um, recently I got into stretching, 
it's kind of yoga, kind of not, I guess. There's yoga elements. Uh -huh. So stretching, um, I started taking walks. Um, you know, people always say to journal. Mm -hmm. Journaling helps to just kind of get things out. I, I've never been good at that for some reason. You know, if it's ideas and concepts, list type stuff, I'm fine. But if it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, um, music, art, that that does it for me too, definitely. Um, um, I was thinking about getting into meditation as well. I haven't really gotten there yet, but maybe the the um, the yoga and stretching is 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 a really close cousin to meditation. You know. Yeah. Focusing on is are you doing like forms and such? Are you like focusing on the the certain forms uh, or certain stretches poses? No, you know, I'm just kind of following this uh, guy I found on YouTube, and he he'll say, "No, this is child's pose." But then we'll do some things that are not; they don't have a name. They're just stretch your leg, basically. <laughs> What's that pose called? Like you, you arch your backs like the cobra, the snake, or something, where you're mm -hmm. you're you 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 basically lay your hips on the ground and you press your, 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 your arms up and you arc, you end up your, your, Oh back, yeah. 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 Back yeah, ends no, up I, like a little half crescent moon. Right, yeah, I know the pose, but I don't, I'm not sure of the name. Mm -mm. I thought it was like something to do with like snakes. Yeah, probably. I like to do that pose uh, and hold it and, and hopes that like my lower lumbar will go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause sometimes it'll go. You know, I'm like, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, just God, like uh, this relieves some of that tension. Yeah, right. that that I, stretching is very, very soothing. Stretching uh, is great, and it's it's really, you know, if you have a pet, if you have a dog or a cat, you can learn a lot from them just by watching them. Watch how much they stretch. I mean, I we have a little kitty cat here, and she stretches so much. I mean, obviously, cats sleep so much throughout the day, yeah. But she's just always stretching. Every time she gets up, she's stretching her whole body. It's like t they they sleep for like twelve to fourteen hours or something. I think yeah, you know, or more. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even know. Um, or more, yeah. Or <laughs> like you gotta stop sleeping. You're making me jealous. You know. <laughs> You know, um, do you get a lot of sleep? Are you uh, are you a person that gets an ample amount of sleep? Or you feel like you get more? I do. I could probably have better, you know, more sleep. Um, sometimes I am a night owl. I've always been more of a night owl than a morning person. Um, so sometimes I can catch myself. It's like okay, it's one 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 thirty. I need to be thinking about bed, but I'm still like in go mode i'm still like creative mode creative mode yeah um, activated yeah just stimulated just like let's let's go let's do something i wish i i had the no oh, i know i'm not a wish but like um, i wish i was in a position where i can where i could just if i was in that f that state of flow mm -hmm. right i wish if i was in that state of flow i wish i could just keep continuing to to do that but i, I normally have to taper it off around 8 in the morning <laughs> because of uh, uh, wait eight in the morning, I have to stop uh, because uh, life happens. Um, oh, I, I see. Okay, yeah. So I'd be like, oh, well, I have to do everything else now. Um, hmm. And then the evening, I'm, I'm just I have to crash. So, um, yeah. so yeah, uh, getting in that flow is a, a. I would like to say it's kind of like a gift, being that that like that hmm. that uh, that that like feeling where you're you're calm but you're creating so you're you're, you're yeah. calm and productive you know yeah. that is a like like a zen like moment that is oh definitely very hard to achieve well like i for me it's hard to achieve like uh, there's always things kind of in the back of my head knocking on me saying you gotta go do this don't forget to you, got, you know sure um oh, yeah absolutely man Brian. Yes. What advice can you give to other artists? Oh my gosh. Um, I think from my own experience, what I would get the, the advice I'd give to artists is, you know, create from your heart. 
meaning just create, you know, put who you are on the page or the screen or in the song. Um, because from my experience, that's what people really connect with. There's an authenticity there that's kind of undeniable. People will connect with that. Um, and I think that's all I would say. Take naps and baths. Take uh, Create from the heart. Yeah. Fr frequent cat naps. Yeah. And... Um, Make sure you take lots of baths with equal parts Epsom salt and water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't say any of that, but I, I mean, I like that idea. I like that idea. My hot you, you, you'd literally sink into like crystals of salt. <laughs> you wouldn't sink. You would sit on top. Of oh, the yeah. I mean, yeah. And... Well, you, you'd hope like, it's not dissolving. What's this going? What's happening here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Brian, do you are you do you have any like um, dream projects that you want to work on in the future? Some ideas that you wrote oh, down gosh. on your pads that you um, that it's not the right time, but you would like to pursue them later on. I guess I guess so. Yeah, there. I'm not I'm not sure how how to say it. Um, I know musically, I'm always interested in. Um, exploring themes like you would find in a movie, like a movie soundtrack. So maybe like soundtracking something um, or or creating something um, that has a visual element to it. And, you know, visually, in arts, painting, drawing, I, I would like to work a little larger. I mean, that's not really a dream project, but it's something I've been kind of scared of working a little larger. Uh, most of mine are uh, watercolors are, I think, 11 by 15, 11 by 17. Um, but I, I, I've noticed, I'm finding myself, you know, uh, I'm drawing on like a 9 by 12 sketchbook and just always running out of space. So I'm just like, maybe I, maybe I could just go larger and create these nice, large paintings or drawings. I don't know. So you want to increase your uh, your the scale of your work? I I would only because, and I'll say this only because it feels natural. It feels like okay. I'm needing to do that. I know a lot of people will tell you like, um, "Oh, do you want to sell your artwork? Then go big." Like that's how you do. It. I've had lots of people tell me that. Like just just make it huge. Then people will love it. Or I don't know what the thought is there. But I was like, well, that that's never felt right to me. Um, I don't want to work huge. I want to work this, but now I'm just kind of feeling that like I want to go big. Do you have a, uh, would you have a place to store those big drawings? <laughs> no, yeah, no, we have no storage here. In this pa house. Paper is so hard to store. You have to, you have to have the flat files, the flat files. Yeah. Which are crazy expensive. Like, uh, um, I think I was talking to another artist, but they're like two thousand dollars or something like that for like. It's ridiculous. For like five files, or, or maybe five, or maybe it's like only three, you know. Um, yeah, they're they're expensive art. Like, I I want to have this. Com I want to state this out loud, and you might you might you you're probably going to have something to comment about it. But like, okay, uh, c customers and, and like the, the 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 person that doesn't know that looks at the art and wonders why the artwork is X amount of uh, dollars to buy. Uh, they're like, I can do that. Well, you, in theory, m many of you can do that, but like the, the, the materials themselves have a, a substantial amount of uh, like value to them. Like to, to make said piece, you have to have $7, $8 paper. Right. Yeah. And then you have to have, Forty dollars worth of uh, um, paint, you know, that that you can reuse through time, but then you might have to refill, right, and get another tube or uh, two tubes, or uh, and then you, you have brushes that will wear out through time, you know, and yeah. then there's the 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 uh, the uh, issue of having to store said pieces. Some people are able to store them wherever and then some people will buy actual plate things to store said work you know so there's a lot yeah. of 
like money involved of art that that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My thought about that is let me say something because this is a quote. I don't know who said this, but I've seen it several times where it's talking about modern art is uh, basically, you know, quote, I could do that plus, yeah, <laughs> but you didn't. <laughs> right. So ugh, I hate, I hate hearing that. Well, I could do that. Well, <laughs> Yeah, you didn't. It's true, though. You know, yeah, the, the, it like, it, it, and like, no, you, you, you can't do it. You, you, it, like, ninety-five percent of you won't do it. You know. Yeah, I think when people say that, they're they're actually thinking, I could do that if I practiced every day for a year. If I did it, if I did, they, they don't mean like right now. Like, I could do that right now. No, no, no. No, they mean like if I went to art school, if I did this, if I did that. What's what's so funny about that is, um, especially when when if you have a a, a person looking at abstract work, mm. and they see that, they think that they could do that uh, because of it, because there's this. I guess they see uh, uh, this faux naivete, this faux childlike work, mm. like it looks like it looked like a child did it, right? Or whatever, mm -hmm. and so they assume that they could do it because it looks like. Well, it doesn't look real. Yeah, like photo real. So they're yeah. yeah, and and then the what what from my experience, uh, that stuff is even more difficult to do than uh, just trying to learn from drawing from life, or not not necessarily more difficult, but like equally as challenging because there's 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 inherent difficulties of doing that type of work. Yeah. Um, and because like when I'm teaching that to, to students, they, they, they don't get the, the concept of like dealing with manipula manipulating shapes mm -hmm. and form and line. And then when, when a person uh, talks, uh, says that they can do that, that's it's like, man, you don't have experience just messing with circles, dog. <laughs> it's like, they're like, seriously, um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, if someone says that, you know, I, I could do that or whatever. My, like, my thought is like, well, I would like to see, I would like to see it. And I don't mean that in a prove it. And I, no, I don't mean it that way. Challenge accepted. I don't mean it that way. I mean, like, you know, I don't know. This person is not my enemy or whatever. So it's just like, well, then wh why don't you do it? Why yeah. don't do it and have a show? And then you can charge whatever you want to charge. I don't know. Yeah. No. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brian. Yes. Do you do you have any life advice that you would like to share? Oh. Um, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Um, I'll, I'll do another quote. That's my... It's my favorite quote. I think it's truncated. It's not the full thing. It's a poem uh, by um, Maya Angelou. And I think it was the Clinton um, inauguration, maybe. I'm not sure. But she says, um, each new hour holds new chances for new beginnings. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new sets of change. And that, that is a very truncated part of it. But that, to me, always resonated of like... Um, you know, maybe things are feel bad right now. Maybe you feel stuck right now, or maybe you you don't know what you're doing, where you're going. You can rest assured that things are always changing. Things are always everything is transitory. It's 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 all changing. It's all moving and flowing. So you just move and flow with it. That's my advice. Uh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I'm gonna I'm gonna. After this, I'm gonna have to get that quote and write it down. I'm gonna put it in my journal. That's, That's a I good do. quote. I'm gonna put that in my journal. She was and, a wise, wise woman. I, yeah, yeah. Um, so, anything else you'd like to dive into, Brian? I don't think so. Oh, I have one more question. This is something okay. that uh, uh, I. Uh, 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 recently had a conversation with uh, 
about and um this this was a, su a suggestion of what i should consider doing with with my uh, uh interviews hmm. um i think uh like i'm gonna have to write, write the question down i don't have it available but like i'm gonna okay. do a, a a kind of like a a cliff notes version of the question so the question okay. is something along the lines of like what's the the main takeaway you would uh you would like any viewer to get from this uh interview or this conversation oh um if i'm honest my first thing went to like vanity like oh, i hope they think i'm cool and <laughs> smart and funny <laughs> um that's just human that's just like you know vanity but um Probably the the aspect of you know we haven't touched on it a lot, but it, it's what my work deals with about being comfortable in your own body, and I think I think you hear that a lot nowadays, or at least I seem to. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. that's just because where I'm at, but it's it's really it's really important, and a lot of people don't really get there they're not comfortable in their own body. They do turn to other things, stimulants, whatever, just to like make them not feel or feel different or feel whatever. But it's like the importance, what I would like to, for them to take away is the importance of feeling comfortable in your own, in, in your own body. And, and knowing, maybe you don't feel comfortable in your own body right now, but knowing that you can, that, that'll come. Thank you, Brian. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, okay. Since you have music, yeah. Uh, why don't uh, wait? One other thing. I'm, I'm yeah. getting ahead of myself. This, this there's a new like this was like a uh, there's a, a new wrench in the the uh, gears that I wasn't uh -huh. used, wasn't expecting was the possibility of of leading out with your music. Yeah. Uh, it went above the 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 last thing. Where can uh, um, people find you where can they see your work oh well on instagram i'm not i'm not very many places on the internet i'm on instagram um at galactus face and i think you have that in the um description i believe i do i think so um my music i'm on Bandcamp. uh volna star i'll spell it v-o-l-n-a-s-t-a-r volna star <laughs> um don't know what that means i just i'm anyway um i'm i think i'm on twitter i never ever use it uh i, I don't even know what i'm called on twitter <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like, it, it's like your name with a bunch of numbers behind it probably I don't, I don't do that if i if i i have to find some like real or made up word it can't be like you know cool three five nine it has to be something else <laughs> Galactoid, Galactus, something. Marvel character, Galactus. Mm -hmm. yes. um, Brian, thank you so much for uh, taking Absolutely. time today to talk to no, me thank about you. your work. Uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, so bef what I want to do uh, right now is I want you to uh, lead us out with a, a couple minutes of your uh, of one of your favorite songs you just made, if you don't mind. And then okay. like after like a minute or so, we'll just, we'll just uh, exit, you know? And then okay. that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Really do appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe and check out Brian's work on Instagram. And also, I will be putting his um, Bandcamp band uh, a link on the in the description after this live stream. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So what are we going to be listening to right now? Okay, this is the last song on the EP. Yeah, uh, it's meant to. Uh, it's pretty ambient. Okay. Very dreamy. If you wanted to um, get calm and relaxed, this is the track to do it to. It reminds me of of some of those like um, meditation song uh, uh, streams you can find on YouTube. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we've there's rain. Can you hear rain and yeah, cityscape type stuff.
And what's that audio in the background that like um talk? That's cool. It's Maggie Chong from a she's a Hong Kong actress. Uh do you know Wong Kar Wai? No. Okay. Well that's a <laughs> she's in a movie from Wong Kar Wai. Have you ever uh uh consider making like little music videos to complement these songs? I think that's what I'm thinking of when you asked me about a dream project. I think maybe I'm that's where I'm kind of headed towards. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, that yeah. I don't know the first thing about film or that kind of thing, but I think it could be fun. And how long does it typically take for you to make one of these songs? Hmm. And sometimes they shoot right out. This one took a, a, all of these tracks took a long time because I was doing a lot of mastering and mixing, getting the rain sound just right and volume just right. So it doesn't overly dominate. So it doesn't dominate. So everything kind of sits in the mix, kind of nothing's too loud or too soft. What's the uh, the inspiration of that that? What are those chime noises that you have there? What's that from? I wanted to, uh, this this track, so every track is heavily inspired by something else, a, a genre or a uh -huh. specific song or whatever. This one is a little newer than 90s, is um, by t a band called 2814. And they do stuff called Vaporwave, which is like meant to, or Dreamwave, more wave. <laughs> more wave. <And> <laughs> It's meant to evoke like, I don't know, like maybe old VHS or like old memories or old. So you'll hear those chimes and you, you can hear that they're warbly and they're like out of pitch. Yeah. On purpose. Like they're, it's meant to just be like, is this a memory or a dream I'm having? Yeah. Hmm. Have you, um, have you thought about uploading these on like uh, YouTube? I have. I played with that idea. I'm not sure how that how that works or what I you, what I do, but yeah. Like you could upload them and just have like a, a either a still image, or like your, yeah. your uh, plane like there, or you yeah. could even you can even get like um, um like a looping the, image or something. Yeah, you can also get like there's some free st uh, video stock that you can use as well that just kind of yeah. loops over and over again, hmm. you know. Um, but you know, or you can use it as a, a catalyst for some of your your video projects, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe you could just have like a recording of of like rain, like of of outside your window of rain with the song going on. Yeah. In the background, well, you, you know? know, I've dabbled in animation. Yeah. I've done a couple little animations, so maybe maybe that's something as well. well that'd be really cool. I'd like to see yeah. that in the future from you. Well, I'll make sure to send you a link if I do it. Yeah, you better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So is this almost over? Is we is it a long is it a long track? Let's see here. This is this has got about another minute to go. All right. Cool. We can fade out or I can end it now. I don't know how to fade out. Um, I'm just gonna hit um, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night, Brian. I'm gonna see you outside a live stream. Okay. Okay.